what's up YouTube, it's ICU. Today we're going to talk about jailbreaking and iOS 13. We have a lot to cover. Today Apple released iOS 13.1.3 to the general public less than one month after releasing the first build of iOS 13 to the public, which is absolutely unprecedented. We're going to get into that in just a second, but I also wanted to mention that we're going to be answering a lot of commonly asked questions that we've received recently. So if you're at all confused by any of the recent jailbreak related news, then just be sure to watch through this video entirely. We're going to be talking about how 13.1.3 specifically impacts jailbreaking, what we can expect from the firmware, when we can most likely expect a jailbreak, what's going on with the checkmate, exploit and check rain, what will likely be the first jailbreak to make use of said exploit, which devices are affected, and what to do based on which device you have, whether or not you should update. We're going to get into all of that. And we are going to talk about iOS 13.1.3 as an update, but first I wanted to mention that if you guys have yet to bookmark our jailbreak status checker page, definitely do so. It will be the first link below in the description. Remember right below that like button. And once you navigate to it, you'll either have a red no or a green yes here once a jailbreak is released. Currently there's no jailbreak, so it says no. That page is dynamic, meaning that once a jailbreak drops, it will be updated immediately. And it will also contain download links and everything you need to access actually jailbreak iOS 13. So be sure to bookmark it and check back regularly. Now, with that said, again, we're going to be talking about the update first. So let's go ahead and scroll down inside of settings to general, followed by software update. And you can see here once it communicates to Apple servers that it pulls back iOS 13.1.3 as an available update. And right off the bat, all it says is that 13.1.3 includes bug fixes and improvements for your iPhone. And it gives you a link to learn more about the security contents of this update, which we're going to talk about shortly. But first, let's go ahead and tap on learn more. And let's go over some of the bug fixes in 13.1.3 because it's actually a pretty decent update for a minor 13.1.x release. Remember, this is the third update for just 13.1, which is incredible. It states that this update, quote, addresses an important issue that could prevent a device from ringing or vibrating for an incoming call. So that's a big one. Also, fixes an issue that may prevent opening a meeting invite in mail, resolves an issue where data in the health app may not display correctly after daylight savings time adjusts, fixes an issue where voice memos recordings may not download after restoring from iCloud Backup addresses an issue where apps might fail to download when restoring from iCloud Backup, also a pretty big one, fixes an issue that can prevent Apple Watch from pairing successfully, probably the biggest issue that it corrects right there, resolves an issue where notifications may not be received on Apple Watch, fixes an issue where Bluetooth may disconnect on certain vehicles, improves connection, reliability of Bluetooth hearing aids, and addresses launch performance for apps that use Game Center. Now, me personally, I've actually noticed a couple of things. I've noticed the issue on Bluetooth. I've noticed it disconnecting from my car regularly and also even the Apple Watch. Mine did pair successfully, but certain notifications do not appear on my Apple Watch. So this update fixes that. So 13.1.3 is actually a pretty big update. Remember, iOS 13 had a very rocky start. If you don't know what I mean, let me give you guys some context. So iOS 13 was actually released last month. Remember, it was released September 19th, 2019. So that's less than a month ago because today is the 15th. So it was released less than a month ago back in September. And now we've already had so many updates to it that uh, if we look back to last year, the course responding version iOS 12.1.3, it was actually released January 22nd, 2019. Wow, I just can't believe that. I mean, we're less than one month into iOS 13's life cycle, and we're already at where it took Apple four months to get to in iOS 12's life cycle this time around with iOS 13. That's what I mean. iOS 13 was a rocky start, and interestingly enough, even though we have already had so many updates to iOS 13, Apple has not addressed any major security issues that could potentially lead to a kernel-based jailbreak for iOS 13. Let's talk about that for a second. I'm navigating to Apple's security updates page here, and we're going to scroll down to iOS 13.1.3. And what I'm going to talk about here has actually been maintained for all versions of iOS 13 thus far. So it says iOS 13.1.3 and iPadOS 13.1.3 this update has no published CVE entries. 
So what that means is that there have been no critical vulnerabilities that have been corrected in iOS 13.1.3 that existed in its predecessor being 13.1.2. Again, we have not seen any new CVE entries since iOS 13.0 dropped. And what that means and why it's actually critical is because if you guys will remember, any of the past jailbreak utilities of the last couple years have been issued after new CVE entries were published by Apple. So after new vulnerabilities were already disclosed and patched, jailbreak developers made use of those vulnerabilities. They exploited them and rolled them into a jailbreak utility. The only exception really is Uncover and Chimera for iOS 12.4. And the reason why is because for some weird reason, Apple unpatched and already patched vulnerability that again was corrected in iOS 12.4. Three. They unpatched it for some weird and miraculous reason in iOS 12.4, but the case still stands that every single jailbreak is a direct result of published CVE entries. Now, we don't have any of those yet for iOS 13.1.3. Of course, teams like Google's Project Zero are going to disclose vulnerabilities as they find them, and Apple will patch them in subsequent versions of iOS 13. And you might be wondering, well, why is that important? Guys, these lead to jailbreaks. They're a direct precursor of new jailbreak utilities. I cannot stress that enough because although the Checkmate exploit is great and it's going to lead to a permanent jailbreak for, excuse me, I am reaching off camera here, for devices like the iPhone 10 and older, it's just limited in device support and it will be unfortunately a tethered jailbreak. A lot of people don't like that, but I love it because it means these devices are going to be permanently jailbroken for life. But remember, it will only support A11 powered devices and older. Whereas new jailbreaks that are a direct result of published CVE entries should in theory function on all devices. And I'm talking specifically about kernel vulnerabilities. So there have been no new kernel vulnerabilities fixed in iOS 13.1.3. I'm going to continue to keep my eye on that for you guys. But what that means is that if you do own a newer device like this iPhone 11 Pro Max or anything in the iPhone 10s lineup and up, including of course the 10R, 10s Max, and then anything released by Apple this year, your best bet is to stay on as low of a firmware as possible and then update once we know more. Because in the past, we've known these things in advance while Apple is still signing those firmwares that could potentially receive a jailbreak. Right now, I don't see any great target firmware for you guys to be on. So in theory, yeah, you could update to iOS 13.1.3 if you want to, but we don't make direct update recommendations here on the channel at all for the sole reason that things do change in the jailbreak community on a moment's notice and we don't want to make the wrong recommendation for you guys. We just want to give you all of the information that we possibly can so that you guys can make an informed decision on your own. So the choice of whether to update really falls on you. But I do recommend it's best practice to just stay on as low of a firmware as you possibly can and then update once we know more and once the details unfold. That seems to ensure your best bet of being able to jailbreak specifically if you own a newer device. Now, if you have something older like this iPhone 10 right here, or again, even older than that, then it really doesn't matter in theory. You could be on any version of iOS 13 if you wanted. Like say you're locked out of jailbreaking right now because you're not on iOS 12.4. Either you missed that or you accidentally updated to 12.4.1 or something like that after the jailbreak was released and now you're locked out and you can't downgrade. Obviously, in theory, you'll be able to jailbreak no matter what on every firmware. Check Rain is coming. It's going to be the first jailbreak based on the Checkmate exploit. If you don't know what I mean by that, definitely check down below in the description. We have our full installment of videos covering that news linked below. And basically what it is in essence is a very low level exploit, Checkmate I'm talking about right now, a low level exploit that Apple cannot patch. It's in the hardware, meaning that Apple could only patch it with a new chipset. They already patched it themselves. They discovered it and they closed it in A12 and higher, which is why this won't function on anything above 
of the iPhone 10. But for A11 and lower, they're jailbroken for life. Apple cannot do anything about it. So again, in theory, you can be on whichever firmware you want, but do know this. If a new kernel exploit is discovered and rolled into a jailbreak utility, it will lead to what we're used to in the sense of a semi-untethered jailbreak, meaning your device can fully reboot without the assistance of a computer and you just use an on-device app to re-enable your jailbreak. Whereas if you are tethered, the only way to re-enable your jailbreak, no matter what, is to plug your device into your computer and re-exploit it. So that's the only way. Well, let's say that in the future, Apple releases iOS 13.2 and all lower firmwares are actually affected by a kernel vulnerability that they patched in 13.2. If you were to actually update to that firmware and Apple stopped signing what was previously the latest public firmware, let's say hypothetically it's just 13.1.3, then the only thing that you could jailbreak with is that tethered or semi-tethered checkmate based jailbreak, meaning you'd have to plug into a computer and re-exploit it. So again, the same thing applies if you have an older device, guys. I really do recommend staying as low as possible. And that's really it. There hasn't been a lot of talk on the jailbreak scene recently pertaining to CheckRain, which as I mentioned, is going to be the first checkmate based jailbreak to be released. It's going to come from hacker Luca Tedesco and Associates. It looks like it's shaping up to be a great and revolutionary jailbreak utility that will function on a wide array of devices, including even the Apple TV, potentially at launch, because we know that CheckRain a few days ago, the official Twitter account for the upcoming utility, tweeted out a picture of an Apple TV being jailbroken with the Checkmate exploit running, followed up with their account retweeting something from hacker Nitto TV, who works pretty much exclusively exclusively on Apple TV jailbreaks. And uh, that's it, that's all we really have guys. Aside from again, knowing a few things like there is now an official Twitter account for CheckRain, which is great and hacker Luca Tedesco basically just showing how much he is working on this in the background, him and a couple of other contributors, again, his associates that he's working closely with on developing this utility. So he is working diligently in the background. He's pushed so many new internal updates to his GitHub project for this that it's almost mind boggling, but that's really it. Nothing other than that, that the public is aware of at this point in time. Of course, just be sure to subscribe. I will keep you guys fully updated as that situation develops and hopefully a new kernel vulnerability will be patched by Apple soon, which will in turn lead to a new jailbreak for all devices, not just the one supported by Checkmate. And again, that will be that semi-untethered flavor of jailbreak, the ones that I know the majority of you guys like. So be sure to subscribe for all details on that. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.